let's begin with the production of the movies that you started with the direction of the movies that you started with so as a director a director is a professional like a chartered accountant or a doctor or a lawyer or anybody else uh, a professional is also an entrepreneur so how do you when you see the script how do you decide what needs to be done and what intelligence goes into it to add value to the script this is a question that every creative person asks again and again and again every time he starts on a script. How to start with this? You see, there are no fixed rules or formulas for this. Especially for us, uh, I believe or we believe that cinema is the most powerful medium ever created by human beings. Uh, I also believe that cinema is a medium which actually communicates the whole world and not just to each other you know and so uh, we believe that the, the two hours that you borrow from the audiences who see your film are precious oh borrow from the audiences fantastic yeah. you know that's a good statement uh, in that case we have to create value for those two hours so that the people who, who are spending money to see your film go back enriched that is the basic premise. And if that is the basic premise, each film has to be special, each film has to be unique, each uh, film is something that the audience would like to carry home with them. You know? uh, so, I'm sure just as uh, you developers do, you see a land and then dream up how to develop it, you know, and what can, can be done with it. Similarly, an idea or a story strikes you uh, as filmmakers and you figure out what is the best that you can do with it? How to communicate that, how to share it actually uh, with an audience in the best possible manner. And each story has its own uh, dynamic, it has its own equilibrium to handle, it, has to, uh, it comes with its own form. The joy and challenge of filmmaking is that each time you make a film, it's a different adventure that you are going on. You know? And so each, each one is special. There's no formula. I mean, people try and call big multinational corporations now are trying to work out a formula which is a successful formula. I think the only formula that works is that each time you have to be different, each time you have to be unique, each time you have to be special. So and for so us as entrepreneurs, for us, the business uh, script is like a script that you see. So when we see the business script, we identify the teammates who will be on board for executing that business plan. As a director, when you see the script, you also start visualizing on who can be your teammates in terms of your production house, in terms of the lead actors, the side actors, the comedians, and etc, etc. So how do you make, take a judgment call on what is a team that should be the best fit for the script in your hands? How do you do that? Uh, and there are two ways of going about this. Most of the industry actually works the other way around. Uh, it figures out who is the film star they can approach and rope in, and then the rest of the things, including the script and the story and everything, follows. Uh, we are crazy people, so uh, we go the other way around, where a story comes first, you figure out what the story requires, and based on that uh, figuring out, you select the best people who will take that story forward. And uh, in filmmaking, you work with so many different people, with so many specialities of their work. And you see their work, you interact with those people, you share your ideas with them, and then figure out what, who is the best person to do those, uh, either that role or uh, participate in the, as a technician in the, uh, in the unit. How do you visualize unfolding the plan that you have decided as far as direction for the movie is concerned? How does it unfold? Uh, in as meticulous a planning as you people must be doing for your projects. Uh, a script is broken down into absolute details. Uh, each sequence and its requirements in terms of costumes, in terms of characters, in terms of uh, the settings, in terms of what are the visual effects that are, each thing is broken down to the, the smallest detail. And then based on that, actually a production plan is worked out. Uh, and Deepa is, is the specialist in that. Actually breaking it down and make it into a coherent uh, 
viable, doable project plan, where all these details are worked out, our time schedules are worked out, the cost parameters are worked out on a daily basis. The, the fact about uh, cinema is that it is, it has the greatest number of variables thrown in, uh, in any project, you know. And these variables change on a daily basis. An actor falls ill and your entire uh, schedules go haywire. You have to rework it on a daily basis. It's like war or politics for that matter, you know. So uh, you're constantly uh, reworking your schedules and plans because there are so many variables that you're playing with. And that's why this kind of an exquisitely worked out uh, production plan that is necessary. Uh, without it, it leads to waste uh, in terms of money, it leads to, uh, in terms of time, time efforts. and efforts and everything. So even after he started his first movie, when he did his first movie, Satyajit Ray, one of the most respectable people in this country for at least entertainment industry is concerned, said that Mr. Ketan Mehta is one of the brightest talent on the shores of India. So that was the credibility that he got even when he started his, when he, even after he did it first time. So I would like to now move my focus to Maya Memsa. <laughs> So Deepa is very well known for what she has done as far as acting is concerned. We all know her as a very uh, renowned actress who acted in a couple of films at the beginning of her career in the film industry. She then went on into production and she really changed the rules for this country as far as animation and multimedia is concerned. So that's the other phase of doing business. So what's the Maya behind this Maya? What's the Maya behind this Maya group? Why the name Maya? Because I think we believe that the world is an illusion <laughs> and truth is always relative your truth will be very different from my truth there is nothing called truth uh, we, we believe whether the, the same thing glass half khali half full kind of a situation uh, <clears throat> having said that I think film industry uh, artists are kind of uh, they're not renowned we, everybody thinks that we don't understand business but there is a lot of method to this madness because it's such a finance heavy industry that you cannot do it unless you tackle the method behind this madness and we all Ketan and I have learned on the job how to uh, do this <clears throat> initially when I it was like diving into uh, a passion so I just knew that it's my life it's a short life when I die tomorrow maybe or now maybe I must say that I did what I wanted. Uh, what do I want at the end of my life? Do I want to say only that my balance sheet was bigger than yours and I? No. <laughs> uh, I want to say that I did what I wanted. Uh, because at the end of it, there's nothing, right? So that philosophy gives you courage and it gives you guts. Uh, to and do that creates want. the Maya. That creates the Maya. So I think Ketan and I both decided, it, it's a very obvious uh, uh, choice for people who are educated. Do you want to go this way or you want to go that way? So do we at the end of our lives just uh, make uh, money with star studded films? Then I think film people actually have very less money compared to 3,000 crores, 10,000, 30,000 crores, you know. So what is it that you want out of life is the question. So we said that both of us agree and that's why we can work together is that uh, we both want the same things which is to express what we want to do that does not mean we think that every film we make uh, is going to be a 200 crore film no there the film industry is quite systematic in that sense there are pockets that you have to opt for so if you want to do this kind of a film you have to understand your audience how big is that audience how much money can you recover from that uh, because it is somebody's money and you can't be responsible for that uh, or you, uh, so there are slots of your budgeting so you have to opt for what you want to do and luckily uh, so far we have uh, done okay <laughs> so after seven production of seven films and ten tele serials television serials 14 I think 14 okay <laughs> no, now, I'm sorry. now if I count my the animation series then uh, it must be about 22 or something <laughs> okay so after doing all of this how do you ensure that investors trust and believe in your talent and they keep investing so that you keep producing. 
like i said by understanding how much uh, money can be recovered with Because this investors subject. is one animal who does not understand philosophy no this is no philosophy the, this uh, is maths actually uh, yeah mm -hmm. i mean the, the investors are very good in their maths yeah and that's what you have to look uh, look at and say all right as long as you see that we are creating value uh in that case that value is value and you know the uh, the thing is that the highest roi is on the smaller films uh the investors who are investing understand that uh it's the bigger films which are very risky and uh, that's why you find the studios are packing up now disney has just packed up we you know we know about five studios we packed up last time is because they were uh, turning the film business from a balance sheet game into a stock market game so uh, and it there it had no uh, foundation i mean how long can you uh, increase your share prices on hype ultimately the shareholders uh, have to face get the reality the, yeah so that's why they actually distorted the game uh, ketan's plan <laughs> <laughs> reading is that the americans have done it deliberately <laughs> mm, uh, because see india was the only country which saw indian movies uh, hollywood had virtually wiped out all other cinema uh, europe everything uh, everywhere they had like a tsunami swept off over all the cultures india was the last remaining bastion So friends uh, uh, Maya group is an accidental entrepreneurship firm as well because necessity is the mother of all inventions like we say when they wanted to create animation effects into their movies they could not get any professionals for that and there they created the concept of education in the field of animation industry and we all know the company Mac M A A C okay so that was also founded by them the original idea was to create professionals who can create content and give it to them as their inputs to the film industry so how was that experience of journeying into the education arena and ultimately exiting it super profitably uh you see as as you say necessity is the mother of all invention uh and that's how it started for us uh we were doing a film called maya mem sab and there was a shot at the end of it where where this woman called maya who is the protagonist of the film drinks a magic potion bursts into a flame of light and disappears as a script writer it's so easy to say she bursts into a flame of light and disappears but this was early 90s uh we were still as in the film industry we were still working with technology of the second world war era you know uh digital technology was just coming in into the world i we must have shot that one particular sequence 10 times and still by the end of it we were not we were not happy with it uh we went to hong kong to do that one single sequence and still by the end of the, uh, it when the film was finally released we were still not happy with that shot and i said isn't it strange that we in indians proudly say that we are the largest film industry in the world we make the largest number of films in the world uh we employ the largest number of people anywhere in the, uh, in the world in this film industry and still this one single shot that we have been looking for uh we don't have the technology to do it and that was the turning point i would like to request mr wasan doble to please come up <laughs> i would like to request vivek mendonza it's awesome having you over They live in a beautiful place at Aksa. It's known as Harmony. It's one of the best places in Mumbai to live. It keeps them fresh, alive, and more creative. And I'm sure this mug will be very helpful in that place. <laughs> 